Right, welcome to this army overview for Blood Angels. Uh, the new revamped force is finished. Um, so I'm now able to put this video together. It's 1850 points. And uh, I'm going to show you the army that I have. We'll run through the codex here. We'll, we'll look at the units that I've chosen, the reason why. And then uh, we'll, we'll uh, lay the whole army out and you'll get an overall view. So look at the units and then the, the overall tactica for the entire force and how to apply it, how, what each unit's function is going to be, how the army work together and then uh, you'll see how this 1850 point force has been put together. So I'll open up the codex here and run through. Uh, for my take on all of the units just check out the codex review for Blood Angels um, where I run through the whole thing. We're just going to go straight to the units that I've chosen. Also uh, on my new channel Striking Scorpion 82 Plus uh, there's exclusive battle reports on there and advanced tactica and I've really focused at the moment I will be doing other forces and uh, other factions but at the moment I've homed right in on Blood Angels and done some advanced tactica videos for them I take some of the key core units of the force and then go into them uh, in a lot of detail discussing them and then we roll up some scenarios and, and go into the depths of, of tactica with those so if you want advanced tactica uh, for Blood Angels uh, other thing exclusive by reports and more uh, exclusive content coming along for that new channel that's just come out then check out striking scorpion 82 plus and that is uh, the link to that will be in the top right hand side of the channel homepage you can go there and it will take you to uh, the uh, the new channel so uh, we'll take a look just through the codex here first unit I've gone for uh, for HQ is a sanguinary priest. A good reason behind it is the model itself. Sanguinary priest model is very, very nice indeed. Let's see if I can get a close up of it for you. So there he is. You can see why I chose him for the force, the, the, the new model that's come out uh, is very, very nice indeed. Uh, took my time painting him, wanted to make him look really good. It's that kind of bone coloured armour, it's not quite white. That uh, looks very nice. Quite a big miniature, for just a regular Space Marine. And uh, this is the new size base as well that uh, Games Workshop have done. Very nice model. Um, I knew when the new Blood, Blood Angels were released that he had to be in the force. So, Sanguinary Priest is the first option I've taken. So, Sanguinary Priest, and he's kind of a floating unit, um, is to sit in with other units. The reason why I've taken him is the, uh, the Feel No Pain that he grants, plus one weapon skill, it's all good. I and mean, he's a character in his own right as well, he's two wounds, um, and he's able to perform a function as well. You know, you can get some attacks from him, you can give him a couple of upgrades. I've just gone for the flat 60 points, not upgrades at all. Uh, the points have been tight for this force. But uh, Sanguinary Priest is in, and he will go with my, the way I've built it is he'll go with the Assault Terminators uh, to grant them plus one on their weapon skill and uh, feel no pain to make that unit a bit more durable um, so he fits quite nicely uh, into the force I've taken another HQ and that's a chaplain similar to the previous sport you'll, you'll see half the army here is based on uh, the original Blood Angels army I didn't want it to continue that theme uh, and so the chaplain has made it in here Flat 90 points for him, no upgrades. Uh, he's in and he's there to uh, aid the deaf company, to give him that zealot to re-roll the misses in close combat on the first round of any combat is brilliant. Uh, he's good enough as he is. He'll get three attacks, two attacks basic, three attacks for bolt pistol and uh, his uh, combat weapon. So he will get three attacks, four attacks on the charge. His weapon gives him strength 6, so he's pretty good in his own right, plus the abilities that he grants as well. And I'd take him as the army commander. I've gone for low HQs here uh, to keep the points cost down for HQs and then to plough the points into other uh, units uh, for this army. Now this force is unbound. I have not got it balanced uh, for a bound list. It's an unbound army, um, so maybe a bit controversial, but that's what I've gone for. Uh, but you'll see the other units as we go along. So no tactical squads, nice models though. Uh, the next unit 
that I've gone for is Def Company, so they are in. It's almost a compulsory choice um, for this army. You have to have Def Company in your Blood Angels army. The combination that I've gone for, and it uh, seems to be working all right, it's two Def Company with uh, Chain Swords Bolt Pistol, two Def Company with Bolters, I just like the poses for them, so they're in. And then two Def Company with Power Weapons. It's the only upgrades I've paid for. Uh, it's a cheap unit, 120 points, and then 15 inch for the Power Weapons, 150 points. They're a suicide unit designed to go in, charge in, mash their way through, and then potentially they'll not be around. The opponent usually panics when they see Def Company and they'll target everything at them. So I didn't want to overinvest points in them. But at the same time, I want it to be quite a capable unit. Uh, the key for these is these AP3 power weapons. Uh, uh, furious charge, you know, plus one strength, rage, two attacks basic, one for weapons. Yeah, these guys are going to be on five attacks each. Uh, so that's ten attacks just from these. And then when you add the chaplain in, there'll be ten attacks with rerolls uh, to hit, which will make them even more dead. So that's that unit combination. Uh, that I go for with them. So next up is Sanguinary Guard. They weren't featuring in the previous army, but I've decided to put them in. Uh, 165 points, and then I just give them the uh, chapter banner on top of that. So I give one with chapter banner, uh, three of them with the Encarmine Blades, two of them with the uh, axes and carmine axe that you can take and they're 165 points then just 25 for chapter banner that's 190 points exactly and uh, they're in they're good armor save 2 plus a uh, good amount of attacks and now a furious charge the, the power weapons here we have strength 5 on the charge these axes will be at strength 7. So you've got a bit of anti-vehicle there, anti-monstrous creature. Um, and then at AP3, and then AP2 here for the axes, you've, you're able to take on multiple targets. We'll look at the tactics for these. I'm going to pull the force together, and then we'll stand back and look at it, and then we'll talk about the overall battle plan uh, for the force. Just going to move the death company out of the way. Here, make way for the next batch coming through. Sanguinary Guard, I mean it's an option I've taken just for the way they look as well. I've chosen units that I like. Um, the look of such a contrast, golden armour, you've got the black armour here and you've got the red. Sanguinary Priest is bone army, nice lovely variety within Blood Angels to have some really nice units. Uh, next up is the Def Company Dreadnought. Love the model. Uh, he's done well in, in the old force, so he is in. And taken the uh, blood talons now, uh, high strength, nice amount of attacks, um, he's able to take on pretty much anything. Dragnaughts, I think, have made a comeback now. Uh, monstrous creatures, not as deadly in assault to smash through at high strength, they often need a smash attack, but that is only one attack allowed. So, Dragnaughts, close combat Dragnaughts, um, stand. A good, a fair chance now. I think it's even the balance out for them. So uh, I think he's a, a good idea to include, and he's at strength ten when he charges in, or strength ten all the time, and shred. So it's uh, a good one to take there. Uh, for more details of these, check out the advanced tactics as I mentioned. Frio, so Dregnor is the next one. He was in the previous force, and he's now in. Again, uh, I didn't want to paint a whole load of new units, I wanted just to enhance what I had. Um, but still, the armies, you'll see some, some changes here. Uh, it's been nice to include the Sanguinary Guard. Furioso Dreadnought is in. Uh, to provide some close range heavy firepower, I've gone for the Frag Cannon. And then under here, multi, uh, the uh, Heavy Flame, I've just added an extra template on top. Uh, to him. So Furioso Dreadnought is in the force, designed to go in the Storm Room 
to be carried around, dropped in, and then to lend fire support and then combat support as well. Regular terminators, no. Assault terminators, yes. Uh, check out the old battle reports, they usually do very well. They've earned their way in, or they earned their position in the force, it was never really in doubt. A dependable unit, uh, deadly in combat, you can send them in against the toughest of opponents and uh, expect to survive with your 3 plus invent and then to strike back hard. Uh, strength 9, furious charge uh, with those. So Assault Terminators have made it in. Again, I've been able to keep the previous models that I've had. You know, New Codex comes out. I didn't want to have to reinvent the entire army. I wanted to keep much of what was already there. Vanguard were tempting, but it's uh, a new unit, Stern Guard are in this new Blood Angels army and I've gone for a unit of 10. Unit of 10 and I've enjoyed painting them, they've been a challenge, uh, they're quite detailed, I painted all 10 at the same time, it took quite a while. Uh, but it's a unit of 10 that I've gone for. So There's quite more infantry in this new Blood Angels force, which is nice uh, to have, just a, a sort of a different looking army compared to other uh, Space Marine chapters. So, the combination I've gone for with them, and it's taken a while, quite a lot of thought has gone into this. I wanted a full unit of 10, and uh, I didn't want to take out any of the I didn't want to swap any of the weapons over so that I lose the uh, special issue ammunition. So I've gone for four unit of ten and then just put in three combi flamers uh, with that unit. And that means they're able to deep strike down and take a drop pod with them. Here, there's a new drop pod that I've been uh, working on. Got it finished. Just paint some nice yellow lines, that makes it cool. And then when you open it up, the yellow lines repeated there as well. Stick them in a drop pod, and that's my, my Alpha Strike unit. They're designed to come down first turn, take out a unit, a horde unit, unit in cover, uh, perhaps a monstrous creature, uh, hit it with the different types of ammunition you can take. And just to guarantee the kill, or to help guarantee the kill, uh, I take three combi flamers. So you land, let out three templates, and it helps um, cause more casualties, and these guys come up it up, the other seven, with their uh, special issue ammunition. One slight adjustment I'm contemplating at the moment is to drop one and have a unit of nine. And then if I do that, it just means that if I want to, my sanguinary priest can go in uh, with the unit transport capacity of 10. I drop one stone guard, then it opens up the possibility for the sanguinary priest to go inside the drop pod. So uh, that just keeps the flexibility for this guy to move around. Uh, to different units. The stone guard done. Uh, it's been a nice addition to the force. I already had the drop pod, but it was half painted, and now it's given me the excuse to get it finished uh, with this new army that's been put together. Razorbacks are dropped, they were in the previous force, they're out. Uh, drop pod here we've covered. Assault squad, uh, they are in. So your assault squad's in. Uh, previously they were in the Razorbacks, squads of on foot, squads of five. Uh, it's expensive to do that now. Um, you can't get the Razorback cheaper if you drop your jump packs. So I've gone for putting jump packs on them. And I've just magnetised them. Uh, so if I ever go back uh, to the regular jump packs, it'll be easy to do. So they just clip on there like that. And uh, I have jump pack option now for all ten. Take a unit of ten. And this is just my sort of cannon fodder type unit, still very good, I mean assault marines are good, uh, but 170 points for 10, and then just for morale I would take the veteran sergeant to give him LD9, and then uh, don't really have the points or power weapons, it's just a light infantry chopping unit. Uh, combat squads, I can break them down into two units of five, and I can just use them to secure objectives. Remember, I've got a lot of the army coming on from reserve, the way it works out, I'm going to need some units to sit and anchor the table in the early turns of the game. You can't have everything in reserve. So really that role will be for the 
uh, assault marines, sanguinary guard, perhaps just to hide uh, on the table in the early turns of the game to keep low profile and then to jump up later on while, when other stuff's on and there's, there's the danger of you being tabled in the first few turns and losing the game uh, has been avoided. So I like the look of them as well. I love the yellow helmets for them and this tends a nice size bulks out the army quite nice and it's not too expensive in points. I've kept the HQs down and I'm able to field a nice spread of units uh, with this Blood Angels army. There's no bikes at all. Storm Raven gunship. Uh, as you see in the picture is how I've done for them, two of them. Uh, they're an important addition to the army. So there's one, they're a bit big for the screen, we'll see them in a minute. But uh, there's two Storm Ravens, uh, the same combination as in the previous force, twin linked assault, uh, twin linked las cannon, twin linked multi melter, and then uh, the rockets. Their anti vehicle is their roll, and then their aim is to transport on uh, their units, deliver them, and then to go into a supporting role once again after that, to so dominate the sky, deliver their cargo, and then to provide fire support. That's the role for two of them, should be able to have some air domination with two. And that is it. Yeah, the Predator isn't in this new force, and neither is the Land Raider, if you remember from the previous army. So there's more infantry in this one that I've gone for, and quite a lot more. There's nice versatility of the units there. Some of my favourite units are in the force. It's unbound, uh, there's no troops in this force, just a lot of elites, and uh, some fast attacks. So we're going to take a look at the whole. Army now, we'll stand back, take a look at it, we'll talk about tactics, what the overall battle plan is, and then you'll know and you'll be able to see in the battle reports how that works out, and if it does work, uh, we will have to see. So we'll take a look at the force. Now I'll stand back and take a look. So that's the new revamped force uh, for the Blood Angels, 1850 points. Uh, nice spread of infantry in this one, some of the old units are out. Um, some new key units coming in. And uh, every unit has a role to fulfill. So overall tactic of, for the army, it's an assault based army. So it's an army that's designed uh, to hunt down the opponent, get locked into combat. Um, there's speed, mobility and there's hitting power in there. So the list really revolves around the function of the Storm Raven gunships. There's two of them. Uh, first Storm Raven, the Assault Terminators and the Furioso Dreadnought inside one. Second Storm Raven would be the Death Company Storm Raven. I think I'll paint this one black as well just to differentiate it from the others. I think it'll look really cool. Uh, Death Company Dreadnought, Six Death Company, and then the Chaplain inside there. These are designed to come on, fly on from reserve. First turn, I go into this in the advanced tactic video. First turn, uh, they come on, uh, neutralizing targets, especially vehicles, uh, is what they'll be after. Light transports, cracking them open. Uh, then the second turn after they arrive, uh, as we're talking about turn three, turn four in the game, they're then to deploy uh, their units. And these units are going to smash the opponent and destroy multiple units and uh, take them out and hit hard uh, at the opponent's force. So, Death Company, they're taking on uh, armor free plus or hordes, just slashing away there with the chaplain helping them get their rerolls. Death Company Drag not take on anything, any vehicle, any monstrous creature, throw them in. And the same over on the other side, Thunder Hammer Determinators take on anything. And then uh, Furiosa Drag not fire support and close combat support as well. That's their function, to move up quick, then the second turn after they're in, deploy, and then these to go into a supporting role to provide more firepower uh, for the force. So that's how they've been kitted out. multi to last cannon, the rockets. Uh, able to take on heavier vehicles, and then if there's no vehicles, then monstrous creatures. Uh, so it's a fire support role, and to dom dominate the air as well. Uh, if the opponent has flyers, uh, then to deal with those as well. So that's that chunk and this section. Then what remains? Sanguinary guard, ten assault marines, stern guard. To aid in this assault is the stern guard. So in their drop pod. Um, their aim is to come down turn one and to ambush a unit. So the, uh, the opponent deploys, choose your target and ambush them. Preferably a horde unit 
or a low armor save or a weak unit and they're designed a bit of overkill but they're designed to go and take it out uh, they choose their different ammunition type they can use their combi flamers and they're to land take out that unit and then their aim is to survive and then to provide fire support uh, for the rest of the game then to occupy it to start the game on the table would be the assault squad um, they'll either jump up in support, anticipating these flying over they'll jump up and move into position or if the opponent is a assault based opponent then just to stay out of trouble slink back split into two smaller squads hold objectives stay out of trouble just to anchor the table and wait for the rest to arrive same function for the sanguinary guard obviously a bit better unit it's nice to keep these two together, the, the benefits, the morale and pinning benefits of the banner. Chapter banner can then help enhance these guys as well. Um, or just deep strike these down in a quiet spot on the table and then use them in later turns in the game uh, to take on uh, high, you know, high quality units or take on vehicles strength 7, strength 5 of their weapons they should be able to take on uh, multiple targets. So that's the battle plan, and really it's kind of this Blood Angel's force. It will be where the opponent doesn't know what's going to happen. He's going to be left guessing until all these reserves arrive. He doesn't know where these are going to turn up, and he doesn't know where the Sanguinary Guard will come on, he doesn't know how the reserves are going to be used as well. So it's the element of surprise, and where your opponent's kept on the back foot because he doesn't know. Uh, the, I mean, in a game, the only thing that may be deployed on the table will be uh, the unit of uh, 10 assault marines, the rest will be off. And your opponent then, uh, you're starting to control the game because your opponent's having to think, uh, you know, hypothetically what could happen. He doesn't know for sure, he can't see your force on the table. So you have your plan and you're able to keep it secret because your forces aren't deployed. Uh, there is a risk to it that you may roll terrible on your reserves and these stay off for a long time. That can be the downside to this. Uh, but with Assault Marines, Stern Guard coming down, um, Sanguinary Guard, you'll have some presence on the table, uh, but it may take a few turns for it to kick in um, until the rest of your force can turn up. So that's the plan for this Blood Angels force. Uh, I think it will work quite well. Looking forward to using them in games. It's nice to see the army finally done. Happy with the paint job. Uh, I've pretty much got all my favourite units in the army. It's unbound, as I said, it's the only army that I have that's unbound at the moment. But I desperately wanted uh, these unit choices uh, in the army. And you can imagine if I started taking tactical squads, I mean, how that would affect the overall philosophy of the force. I've called the army Fury Unbound. It's unbound and uh, it's designed to go around uh, chasing uh, the opponent's force and annihilating them. But we'll see uh, how well. Uh, they do that. So that's the force. Leave your comments what you think of it, uh, what units you would put, you would keep in, what units you'd take out, what combinations you could go for, um, you know, how you would tailor this list, make it better, enhance it. Leave your comments, I'm sure there'll be others. Uh, perhaps new Blood Angel players are looking for advice and uh, read down the comments there and uh, you can get some feedback from some, from some other uh, Blood Angels players who have some experience so that's the video and there's the army keep a look out for them in future battle reports uh, as i said codex review if you want more details uh, from the codex and the other units that i haven't included uh, advanced tactica is over on striker scorpion 82 plus and then a painting tutorial for blood angels i do one of the blood angels terminators from the space hulk game that is available uh, on uh, this channel uh, check that out to show you step by step how to paint Blood Angels, uh, that Blood Angels Terminator, and you can apply that technique to every Blood Angels uh, unit that there is. Same technique I used on the vehicles as well. So there's the uh, army overview. Keep a lookout for this force in future battle reports. Look forward to using them. Thanks for watching and tune in next time.